Hello, everybody, and welcome to this evening's episode of Roll with Advantage. My name is Joe, and welcome to the Explorers of Afera, session 45. And this session, I know one of you knows, I think two of you knows, but some of you may not know that today is a special day for the Explorers of Afera. <laughs> today, as it turns out, is very, 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 very close to the one year anniversary of when the campaign originally started. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Which, for life. I think statistically means we're in like the top 1% of longest lasting D&D campaigns. <laughs> which is a good feeling to have. Um, so, Ooh, it's awesome. a very special day, and um, well, got some special things planned. Uh, and so, uh, let, let's, let's, <laughs> let's hope that the section goes well. Uh, uh, that that sounds ominous, and I think it should. I'm not sure. Um, so thank you to those of you um, who've been in it since the beginning. Uh, and Ryan, I'm sorry that you haven't been in it since the beginning. Believe me, I so wish you were. <laughs> oh, I know, Joe. You, you you've paid the price enough. <laughs> I yeah. If, if you want to talk about <laughs> paying the price and and the sentence that that uh, I I needed to carry out, boy. I, I paid tenfold. We all paid. We all paid. Um, but anyway. I'm, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> I, for one, miss the original crew. <laughs> <laughs> and which is why, special guest right. tonight. What are you doing? Get All right. Okay. I'll stop. Oh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh man. Um. But yeah. <laughs> so I thank you. No <laughs> Mom, pick me up. I'm scared. <laughs> uh. So thank you all for playing. I'm very happy that we've been playing for a year. And frankly, I'm excited to see where the game goes from here because um I'm always very excited to to play this game with all of you almost every single Friday. Um and I am very happy that we can continue to do this. One of the good things that came from the pandemic was meeting all of you wonderful people. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Hell much. yeah. Thank you I much. love you guys. Oh. Uh, we love, love you too. too. Yeah. Some Lush. more than others. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that's, now. That's <laughs> fair. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh with that, let's roll the intro and let's get in to a special one year anniversary episode of The Explorers of Afera. We are back. Let's go ahead and dive in. So, picking up where we left off. Our <clears throat> group of adventurers known as the Wardens of Afera had made their way from Afera after ending the revolution that was going on there. Um, a conflict between the natives that existed there and the colonists. Um, the colonists being driven by two separate entities. For one, Agatha Durandon and the Golden Shields. Um, the fighting force behind the true origination of this civil war, which was the Tarkirian Trading Company, and by that extension, the head of the expansion wing of the Tarkirian Trading Company, Doridine Dupree. Now, a man that only one person in the party has had the esteemed pleasure of meeting, and that's Cyrus. Cyrus, if you'll recall, your entire origination in this whirlwind adventure began when you had a chaos magic surge at just the wrong time, or from your perspective, just the right time. <laughs> so needless to say, your history with Duradine Dupree has been a tumultuous one, and the party has learned just how vicious and vile of a man he can be. So 
all of that being said, the revolution won in your favor. You all plan to finish the job, knowing that Durudine Dupree is headed for the Gemstone Archipelago and knowing other things like um, Morganix's um, divine angelic guide, Galadar having lost his feather that granted him his divinity, knows that that feather is inside the Gemstone Archipelago somewhere, specifically Port Sahala. Also knowing that Cyrus's mother, his birth mother, exists inside Port Sahala, and that, as I said, Durudine Dupree will be here. The explorers of Afera, the wardens, I should say, had a very clear idea on where to go next. Initially arriving in the Gemstone Archipelago and uh, thusly Port Sahala, they had a few reunions, some personal to the party, that of Captain Vera Tinkertop, a privateer pirate, uh, who the party had become very, very close friends with um, several, several, uh, many, many, many sessions ago. Um, now in the Gemstone Archipelago, seeming to help the Merchants Alliance, um, a group of people living inside the Gemstone Archipelago, hoping to make a profit in any way that they can. One person in particular that is a member of this Merchants Alliance is an old friend and an old um, relation of Varnast Helmaru, the man with the great name. Uh, <laughs> uh, this man being Sven, um, someone that Varnast had met and grew to really, really, truly care about. Of course, this reunion wasn't all happiness and joy, as there were some sorrowful aspects of it. But it seems as though, for the time being, the two of them um, are on really good terms, at least as good as they can be. But inside Port Sahala, there are currently two things you can do as you wait for Duradine Dupree to arrive. You can either go search for the feather, or you could have gone and tried to meet with Cyrus's mother, a one Penelope Casario. As all of you learned, allegedly a drug dealer of some kind, or kingpin, um, of some sort. And all of you decided to pursue Cyrus's mom, leaving Galadar, Vera, and Jinx to try and collect clues in the hopes to find something that would lead to the feather. So with that, that is where we're going to pick up. So right where we left off last time, all of you had made your way in to Villa Casario. All of you except one. One key person in this entire equation. Cyrus. Cyrus, at the idea of confrontation with your mother, you rightfully so were afraid. What if she might recognize you? Or even worse, what if she might not recognize you? So you decided to stay outside in a small cafe playing wonderfully delicate Tarkirian music. Um, you eat your small little bits of uh, uh, tea and crumpets waiting for the party to give you some type of information or key as to what's happening. The rest of you entering Villa Casario, you can see that it is equally as decadent and wonderful as Jifang's villa, the one you're currently staying at. However, as you are escorted down through the villa to the meeting room, where you're supposedly going to have this meeting, yes, um, with Penelope, under the guise of Sven. And correct me if I'm wrong, Sven came with all of you, right? That's not me. Since he was the one who set up the meeting, pretty sure. Um, I actually don't know if we... I don't think... I, think I so. assumed he wasn't. Yeah, I just thought I he showed us the way. It yeah. was like... Yeah, that I think we were kind of leaving okay. him out. Just because It was like, there's a potential this might not go well. You probably shouldn't be there. Gotcha. Okay, I do remember that. Okay, so he would have showed you where it was. Guards would have let you in. And then the four of you and Doggolin? No Doggolin. Um, I don't think Alec would have brought Doggolin to this. I don't think that makes much sense. Is Doggolin with Cyrus at the cafe or is Doggolin back at the villa? Doggolin's at the villa. Okay, Doggolin's at the villa. All right, sorry. Getting, getting all the chess pieces set up on the board here. Um, mm -hmm. So the four of you Make your way in. Without Cyrus, oh without Doggolin. <laughs> and you... <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. And as you approach, you can see that there is a wonderfully magical, decadent display um, set up in this windowsill. You can see these large um, 
very Greco-Roman pillars stacked up to an arching doorway um, with a glowing, shimmering, magical nature coming through. And where it should be um, the rest of the archipelago with the that sea of blue and teal, the small and tall buildings, some of the statues of the guardians of the gemstone archipelago. Instead, what you see is rolling mountainous hills covered in jungle. Something that Varnast, very briefly, you would recognize from your travels as the um, natural landscape of the more inner parts of Thrall. The northern, let's see, the, the northeasternmost continent of the world. Um, and you can see that there's even smells of salt um, that come through. Very, very, very pungent. Um, smells. And you can see, standing on that sill, looking out over it, is a woman. Older, um, some age does show on her face, but there is no denying that she is quite beautiful. And you can see black, dark, dark black hair with small streaks of white in it, laugh lines on her face, and small wrinkles on her forehead eyes of gold and wearing clothes of teal and orange and gold and purple. You are quite confident that this woman is uh, Penelope Casarillo. You can see as you approach, she turns away from the view, looks to all of you and smiles. And all of you, well, if there's one thing you are very, very, very familiar with, it's that smile. That cocky, persuasive grin. And you have no shadow of a doubt in your mind that this is Cyrus's mother. The smile, the posture, and the way that she just looks at all of you. Eventually, she stands all the way, and she begins to walk closer. And you can see that posted up at each one of the pillars, there are um, several armed guards in this room. Which, as some of you would know, this is not out of the ordinary. This isn't a, a show of power. This is just her trying to hedge her bets and stay as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. She approaches till she's about five, ten feet away from the group of you, and she begins to speak. So, as I understand it, all of you have some type of offer for me? Some deal you'd wish to make? Is this true? It is. We, you were one of the first people we wanted to meet when we arrived to set up here. Well, I'm flattered. So, I've heard tell of what you plan to offer, but I have yet to see it with my own eyes. Mm. Alec will kind of like awkwardly shuffle the like the bag around and I guess just open it. This feels very drug deal because it is a drug deal, but it's really awkward. Uh, so she'll just kind of like open the bag and just hold it towards her. Mm. Well, that is... <laughs> yes, that is quite wonderful. Um, and she whistles and snaps, and there are two servants that come in with a table, and they set it down in front. She says, please, set it down. Uh, Alec will. And she's going to like pass a glance to Morganix and Varnast as she's setting it down. <clears throat> well... This is quite a lot. Tell me, I am curious. Of course, I have full intention of brokering some deal as well. <laughs> this is too good to say no to. But I am curious how you were able to get this all the way from Afera 
as well. With the current political situation there, Titus has been hard to come by. A hot commodity. I can see one of the natives of Farin have come with you, but how did you get here? That is rather a long story. I can get wine if you'd like. I love long stories, especially pertaining to business. Perhaps that would be best. Ah, very good. Um, wine then, please. Wine. One for all of them. And an extra for me. <laughs> and the servants, they bow their heads and they exit. <clears throat> and eventually after a while, some like chase lounge chairs and seats and stools and just large pillows are brought in and thrown onto the ground. Um, on the table, <laughs> around the duffel bag of Pytus, uh, there are... Th <laughs> this is really... <laughs> I mean, uh, I can just imagine, like, the smell coming from just the bag alone <laughs> is very poignant. Yeah. It's the wood is dank. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is. <laughs> this is. Thank you, thank you, JP. The, the dankest, uh, dankest villa in the Gemstone Archipelago right now. Um, so... Uh, the, the goblets and tankards and uh, um, uh, casks of wine set up all around the table, framing out the uh, pitus. And she sits back, reclines on the lounge chair, um, cup of wine in her hand, slowly sipping away, and she sort of gestures the wine up to you and says, well, let me hear it. What is the story as to how you came into this much pitus and how you ended up here? I'm going to sort of pointedly eye the servants and guards and look back to her. May we speak openly? Hmm. You may. Um, all of you except for Ferdinand. Ferdinand stays, the rest of you leave. And you can see all the rest of the servants bow their heads. And all of the guards leave except for one. You can see one man um, dressed differently than the others. You can see that he has what looks to be thin leather armor on of different flaps with small bits and pieces of scale sort of embedded into it and two scimitars at his side. Um, you can see that he has a finely trimmed goatee and shaved sides, long black hair um, pulled back. Ferdinand is my most trusted guard. Anything you can say in front of me, you can say in front of him. I am grateful for that. You see, we have not been entirely truthful. We desperately want to obtain your acquaintance and friendship, and we hope that much good could come of it. But the truth is, we have been sent because we believe there is a threat on your life. And we have been sent by a man named Zamir. And you can see that um, cocky smile, those sharp eyes just immediately melt. As she just looks to you. How, how do you know that name? Zamir Drago is a good friend to us. He is how we got here. Where is we he? met in Afara. Where is he? He's near. He was not sure how you would react to his presence. How I would react? If he is here, I would have him come to me. There are a million things left unsaid. Do I get the feeling that she's 
harboring any kind of ill will or upset or does she seem like happy and hopeful do i am i getting anything under the mm-hmm. holy shit emotional bomb i was uh, about to say i'm gonna be a dick yeah, and insight check. Inside check. Yeah. <laughs> make your insight checks on the grieving mother yeah you monsters you did this to us joseph uh varnash she's actually a demon <laughs> Oh, <laughs> all lightning! So much. No, yeah, I mean, Sayla, it is hard to decipher for you. Uh, just emotions are already weird to you, but the amount of emotions that she's experiencing, the sort of shifting back and forth between smile to frown to, to everything in between. Um, Morganix and Varnas, though, you two have a better read on emotions, um, and you can tell that. This is a grief-stricken mother who truly just wants to hug her boy again and and say so many things that she never had the chance to. I can I can go and get him. And Alec kind of like stands looking between her and Morganix and I'll nod. Hang okay. on. Alec will stop. Varnas kind of looks back over to Penelope. What happened? I'm curious about that myself. I think we all are. If I understand correctly, from what I was told all those years ago, neither does Zamir. So if I'm going to tell you, I would like him to hear what happened as well. I'll be right back. (laughs) Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Alec will go and attempt to find where we left Cyrus at. Okay. Yeah. Easy enough. You leave the villa and right across the street from the villa is a very high class uh, cafe where you can see Cyrus is just um, sitting out on the front, enjoying his. Uh, but in, in all curiosity, what would have Cyrus ordered in the meantime? Now we're I asking think... the important questions. <laughs> <laughs> I think Cyrus is the type where he would have been like, "Oh, this is nice," you know, get like some nice pastries and get like a coffee, and I'd be like, "No, it's it's late enough at like seven in the morning. Let's get wine." <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, so, (laughs) yeah, Uh, so um, you can see that uh, as you get back out, there is a small uh, glass of wine that's sitting on the table uh, as you approach Cyrus, half drinking. Cyrus, your mother wants to see you. Uh, in most way. In a way that a mother wants to see their child. She's... She was very upset, and... I I think that she simply missed you. Did she anyone... Wasn't... I mean, Alec, did anyone say I look like, you know, as good as I look, like this? Well, no. Um, but she wanted to explain what exactly happened, so maybe she has an idea? <sighs> well, shit. Okay. And sorry, I was just down the rest of his wine and get up. Okay. All right. So, Alec, you and Cyrus are both let back in. The gate shut behind you. And as soon as you make your way through the threshold uh, into this sort of central veranda, um, Cyrus, you see her. And there is a moment where she smiles looking at you. And then you can see the smile fade away as she uh, makes her way across the room to you. And she says, Samir, my boy. And eventually she gets across the room to you 
and she just hugs you. And she pulls back and um, looks at you and smiles, and you can see the sort of tears streaming down the side of her face. I thought you were gone. But you are here. I would recognize I... this hair anywhere. And she kind of like strokes her fingers through your hair. I mean, it's a bit shorter than it was. I, I, I actually lost a lot of my hair, you know, magic shit. I bet you did. And she just hugs you again. I'm sorry that it all came to this. You have to know that I never wanted any of this for you. I, um, I hate to admit this, but, um, after he, well, did, and again, as good as I still look, after he did this to me, I don't really have any memories of much. The only things I have of foggy and far between. Yes. He told me that he did that to you. Everything of me and him and your training, he he removed. He changed. Uh, please, Sid, I, I will tell you all I know. I just, and she hugs you one more time and, and squeezes you. Almost like she's about to rip you in half, squeezing that hard. I just missed you so much. And I am so happy that you found me. She kind of pulls back and she clasps her hands on your cheeks and just smiles at you. And then slowly begins to walk back and um, sits down. And she begins to tell her side of the story. <sighs> many, many years ago, When I was just a... The daughter of a powerful representative in Thoral. There was a man who came. A dashing, handsome, high elf. Solvis. He could do all of these wonderful tricks. These <laughs> enchanting magics. He was wonderful, the kindest soul, the sweetest man. I knew him for two, three months. And I ran away with him. I left my family, my lineage I left it all behind time passed and all I felt for this man was love and care he had such a large heart with so much love he cared so much about anything and everything that came his way. He never got angry. He never 
never lashed out. He was perfect. After many more months, eventually, it is still hard for me to comprehend. But eventually, Zamir came to be. And I, I need you to understand. Not traditionally. Any other mother, they will carry their child nine months. But this, this love I, I felt for Solvis and the love he felt for me, it, it was so strong that One day he just appeared. And it's not unheard of. Whenever Dragonborn find that their soulmate, they, the weave creates what cannot be made organically. And I suppose the weave did the same thing with Solvis. Our, our relationship wasn't physical. It was so much more than that. And although I did not carry Cyrus the way a mother did, I felt more love for him than, than anything in, in my entire life. I gave him everything I had. And he was the smartest, bravest, most charming young man. And he was talented, just like his father. But this is where Solvis, he had such high standards for you. He pushed you so hard to be what he said you needed to be. Training day in, day out. The same drills over and over and over again, studying, studying, studying. Some nights you would come home and you would just weep. You thought that he didn't love you, that he didn't care about you. And I knew he did. He just... He became so consumed in this thing. So consumed in this idea that you were important. And of course you are. But so much weight to put on a young boy's shoulders. No. I thought it was wrong. I, I thought it was... I thought it was wrong, and I tried to tell him, to convince him not to. But he wouldn't listen. He just kept pushing you. And then, one day, he told me he was finally going to have a breakthrough with you. And you, you were so happy. He was so happy. The two of you went off to the training yard, and I thought that finally things were going to change. But 
that uh, they didn't. I heard you yell and scream in, in anguish and pain. I heard him scream in anguish and pain. I ran. And there I found you and him. Solvis. Close to death. Bloodied and bruised and you purple with horns I screamed at him what what did you do why why he had no answers he, he didn't say anything he picked you up he cast some spell. And you, you fell asleep. I've never seen a man like him hold so much shame in his face. For days you slept, and for days he wept. I tried to convince him that there was another way, that even if this did happen to you, even if you were like that, you were still our son. And we should still care for you and love you. And, and even if you couldn't be what he wanted you to be, you were still our son. And he kept going on and on about how no. I have to train the one. He's not the one. I screamed at him night after night. But he didn't listen. I tried everything I could. Until one night, you woke up. And I held you. And we cried. When he came into the room. And he took you from me. And he changed you. He made you forget everything about his mistake about him about us and then he sent you off <laughs> he is a cruel spiteful man who was too obsessed with his fate and with destiny to care for his own son. <sighs> I tried to find you sooner. I did everything I could, I... but I could never find you. It turns out I didn't need to. 
because you found me. It, uh, it's taken me a little longer than expected. It's all right. All that matters is that you're here now. <sighs> I'm sorry, it's not proper business etiquette to see me in this state, but... I have not thought about that night in many years. The night after I left... I could not go back home. My family had been removed from its position of power, and any members of that lineage would be killed on sight. So I came to the only other place I knew of that would accept rejects and people with nothing. I came here. And I've tried to do everything I could to fill that void. But all of the money in all of the planes could not replace the hole that you left, Samir. The pit that Solvis created. Well, um, let's get rid of that ghastly name, Dragu, and let's just forget any connection to the name Emeril for now. It's Zamir Casario. <laughs> it suits you well. <laughs> you can see her laugh a little bit at that and smile and Cyrus you know that the mother that you had in Sloshtat she did care about you but it, it was empty it was obligated because of how terrible that man was the way that Penelope is looking at you and smiling, Th this is a real mother's love. <laughs> well, And you can see she's just speechless, not sure where to go next, especially after all of that. <laughs> I suppose you forgive the pretense of business then. Of course. It was a great way to get my attention because... If someone came to me saying that they, um, were Zamir, I would not have let them in. I would have assumed that it was one of Solvis's lackeys, a servant, sent to spy on me. We do believe you might be in danger. Oh, yes, that... Sorry, little caught up. Um, I was enjoying this delightful cafe over the street until uh, dear Alec brought me in. That part is true. Um, Duradine Dupree. Nice chap. And she audibly scoffs. 
That man has made advances on me for the past ten years. Without fail, once every month, bestowing a new gift at my gate, hoping to woo me to marry him. <laughs> you know? I don't think he's interested in wooing anymore. It would only make sense. <laughs> We're going to kill him. Alec just peeps up. <laughs> You're right. You Alex, are. like, opens and closes her mouth a couple of times and then shrugs, like, yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know what? If that fat, pompous idiot would like a war, then he will have one. You're going to kill him, and I am going to help. He thinks that he can make an attempt on my life? No. No, no, no. Where I come from, that is the game that is played. Too many descendants from the Underdark made their home in Thrall. The game of politics there is cruel and vicious, and he knows nothing of that. If he wants a war, he will have one. And I can guarantee you that he will fail. And you can definitely see the different folds of character starting to unveil themselves between that calm, sad mother mourning to this absolutely vicious businesswoman um, who has been sort of forged from her, uh, her events. Well, we are still making our plans, but we wanted to see to your safety first. I'm not sure if you have a place that you could go or someone you could be with until this is handled. Or she could come stay with us. Would you like to do that? Um, where are you staying? I forgot the name. Uh, we're staying with Ujifang. And you can see her give out a heavy sigh. Another suitor, but at least that one is less awful. He's not there, is he? No. He has lent it to us because he believes we are going to sell Pytus and also kill Duradin Dupree. Yes. I mean, that part's true. Um, and you can still have some if you want. You don't have to if you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> How about we deal with this assassination first, and then we go on to that? Ah, got it. Alec will quickly zip up the bag. <laughs> Is there really a zipper? I don't know. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Exists, I'll tie up the bag. <laughs> I mean, it'd probably be like leather straps, you know? <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. Fasteners, I'll do, I'll do that. yeah. <laughs> um, you can you can <laughs> see that eventually she um she whistles, and you can see more um the guard some of the guards return, um and she says, I want you to warn some of the handmaids that, due to some circumstances, they should gather the rings of disguise and. They should um, begin the duping act. I will be staying at Zifang's villa. In the meantime, you will keep one here at all times. You will keep one in the retreat villa on the far reaches of Port Zahala, and make sure to keep two or three maneuvering around the markets at all times. The guards nod. And... She looks back to all of you and she says, These women, they know what they got themselves into when they became my handmaids. I do not wish harm upon any of them, but it was a trick that I learned when I was a young girl. 
Having multiple versions of yourself moving around the city makes it difficult for any assassination attempt to be successful. Any true one, at least. <clears throat> well. Um, I will say that Ferdinand is always by my side, so he will be coming with me. And you can see the um, muscular but very live man uh, make his way over towards Penelope's side. And she says, well, if you are ready, I am ready. What? What? Well, if you guys have no other business you'd like to accomplish in her villa, you can, um... Escort her. Yeah, sorry, I just, I had to give permission to somebody's use of the word MILF because, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Twitch was like, this might be a questionable word, do you want to let this happen? <laughs> a worthy cause. My bad, Jazz, sorry. Um... Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. All right. Here we go. So with that, <laughs> um, you, Penelope, man, you guys are getting the NPC squad at the Zhao oh, Feng. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Rollout squad. I know. So um, there are three versions of Penelope that make their way out with you. One is the true and the other two are um, sent to the villas. Or not to the villas. They're sent to the uh, exterior markets to make their way around. Um and the crazy part is they are absolutely indistinguishable um, from one to the other. Their hair moves the same way whenever the wind, um, whenever the breeze happens. I mean, Im almost impossible to, to distinguish them. Even when they speak, um, talking back and forth, they all sound the same, mimicking the voice perfectly. Um, it's an odd sight. And you can see that also behind each one of them is another Ferdinand. Um, all of them dressed the same, meant to really, really confuse and fluster um, anyone who wishes to uh, to try and make an attempt on her life. Is Luckily, there art for Ferdinand? Um, no, there's not. I'm sure that I can find one. What the fuck, Joe? No. <laughs> 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 hey, what are you doing? So uh, okay, so uh, um, with that, you can see the other two oh wow um the other two duos they split off and head off into different directions all of you make your way back to the Zhao Fang estate and you can see that Galadar Jinx and um Vera have not returned yet from their investigation as it's only been about um three hours or two hours since you left um so their trek through the city has probably taken a little bit longer so, um, as all of you make your way back to the Casario or back to the uh, Zhao Fang Villa, um, ready to um, make a plan for whatever comes next. I know it's a little early, but that's where we're going to take our break, just because that's a that's a that's a nice stopping point. That's a nice stopping point right now for for the temporary. Yeah. Um, all right. So we're going to take a break there. Be back in five ish minutes, and uh, then we'll have a a solid. Uh, two hours of session left. So, so uh, with that, we're going to hop to the break and we'll be right back.
Kayla. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> Roll to advantage. My name's Joe. Welcome back Spider from the break. Spiders. What? What? And that's where what? we're going to end tonight's session. <laughs> 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 so, uh, no, obviously just kidding. Also, just for those curious, um, because LS pressured me into it, this is the art for Ferdinand. <laughs> You're just welcome. Kidding. I just I just wanted to find it. It's pretty it's pretty sick. I like it. He doesn't have a frosty sword, but he's looking good. All right. He is, yeah. Exit out of that. Okay. So uh let's go ahead and dive back in. So picking up where we left off, the party had found themselves finally in Penelope's villa. Penelope Penelope Casarillo. Um eventually conversing with her and telling her that you were sent by Zamir, sent by your traveling companion, Cyrus. And, well, what came to pass was about as um, depressing as you've come to expect from this campaign. <laughs> um, eventually learning that Cyrus wasn't born in the traditional sense. He was created by the weave, a la Jesus or Anakin Skywalker. Pick your poison. Um, um, at least as far as Penelope told you. So Why you gotta say it like that. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> so you learn that, and she tells you that Cy or that Emeril, or Solvis, as she kept calling him, um, was so ashamed of his creation and the same thing that Emeril told all of you is that he couldn't face it the one part that he left out is that he took Cyrus from Penelope's arms and removed his memories using the spell that Morganics you probably would have read of before modify memory being able kind to kind of a dick move yeah on a on his own child. Um, like I didn't hate him already, but okay. <laughs> Keep adding gasoline to the fire. Uh, <laughs> so you learn that and all of you keep getting added things to your, your list of reasons not to like Emeril. Um, and we'll see where that goes. And yet so Joe takes it personally when we talk shit about him. It's because I'm a sensitive boy. I have feelers, okay? And my feelers my feelers are sensitive. Um that's straight kind of arrow. Weird. That's uh, all I'm saying. <laughs> straight arrow. Mm. So Cyrus doesn't have to know. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, anyway. So you learn that and you also learn that, well. She is just furious learning that Duridin Dupree is attempting uh, to make an assassination, uh, trying to assassinate her. And she is full force in it with you to do everything she can to make sure that he dies instead of her. As far as going to threaten all out war um, with him. <laughs> so. You all broker a deal that you will aid in this, and this is something that you're totally okay with. Um, and all of you make your way back to Ji Feng, Ji Feng's estate to plan. And so with that, you make your way back, walking through the uh, marbled and uh, um, rickety wooden vineyard that outstretches and wraps around all of the different pillars here. You eventually make your way back into the interior of the villa, um, where at least as far as your knowledge, you are safe, and you can see that Sven is here waiting for you. Um, he hasn't had um, anything that he needed to do today, and he decided not to accompany the people going to do the maybe dangerous thing. Um, as soon as all of you make your way in, he... <laughs> as soon as all of you make your way in, he looks to see who you've brought with you and hearing all of you walk through, he says, so how did the me? Um, well, Madam Casario, it's um, an honor to, to meet you. 
Um, any kind uh, of mo- mom, this is Sven. Sven, this is mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello there, Sven. Uh, you were the man who came to the gates the, uh, yesterday? The deal of Pintus? <sighs> yes, I-, I hope that you can forgive the... Um, Deception. I I was merely trying to, um, and she just kind of waves her hand. You are fine. Do not worry about it. Um, and she just smiles. And he says, uh, yeah, yeah, I will not worry about it. Thank you. Well, I'll, uh, I'll leave you guys to it. I'll go. Um, and he just kind well, of points behind him. And uh, uh, Sven, I actually had a question before you left. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much you know, but being from around here and I i suppose having your he- ear to the ground, has there been any word on Dirty and Dupree and his arrival? If we're going to make this plan, I just feel as though we need more information. I haven't heard anything, but you know what? I, I can go do that. Um, I can go collect some information, just purchase some things, ask around. I do know that um, he hasn't been to Port Sahala in a while, so that probably means he's overdue for a visit. Um, But I'll ask and see if there's any information, maybe on any parties that he has planned or anything like that, if you'd like me to. It's probably a good idea. We could see if the, his servants have been alerted to prepare the house for him. Perhaps they would have a date. I could also scry on him. Oh, that is true. You could do that. We could do all of those things, really. Yeah, so I, I think... Those. Yeah, the most... Im- the more information we have, the better, before we just dive in. This is going to be a very delicate situation. Yes, that is um, putting it lightly. From what I've heard about Duradin and his arrivals in Port Sahala, he, for one, spares no expense in his luxury, and for two, spares no expense in his safety. So, I'm sure whatever plan we hatch, we'll need to make sure that we have all facets covered. But in the meantime, I'll go put my ear to the ground, ask some questions, and see if I can find anything out for all of you. Thanks, Sven. Of course. Happy to help. Yes. Uh, by the way, does anybody have anything they'd like me to pick up while I'm out? I mean, if I'm going to be out, I can pick up some food if you'd like. I just really wanted to get some more of that shaved ice. It's just so good. It's there. <sighs> All right. Uh, nothing? No? Mm-hmm. You sure? Can't think of anything. Uh, if you're buying. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? Shave dice then, please. You got it. All right. Well, I'll be back and uh, enjoy your time. And once again, it was an honor, uh, Madame Casario. Truly. <clears throat> and he smiles and then makes his way out of the villa. Do we have anything of Dupree's? I don't like think a, so. Like an item? No. Yeah, it would lower my DC. Because I've never actually met him. I've only ever seen him through scrying. Mm-hmm. I, I can still try. Yeah. I, I still will try. Yeah. Um, I'm going to summon the Hexblade. And use the amethyst pommel as my focus for scrying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll drop it in the thingy. I'm just pulling it up. Yeah, yeah. So we can that way we can <clears throat> figure out that DC there. Because I believe it's a wisdom save. Uh, how do I send it to the chat again? Um, that is a good question. It's been a minute since I've needed uh, somebody to do that. Okay, uh, Morganics. It is book. a it is a wisdom save, but I'd like to. I guess I could just read it. Oh, um, you could uh, click the dice. So, like when you hover over scrying, click the little uh, d twenty icon that pops up. That should. Uh, 
allow you to cast it. And it should send it in the chat. Uh -huh. There we go. Oh, there we go. Whoa. All right, I'm well. not making the wisdom save. That was unfortunate. <laughs> that, <would've done> well. <laughs> that was unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. That's the best I'll roll tonight. <laughs> okay. Oh, you look any better in your defense. So let's see. Um, second hand. So, uh, yeah, you haven't met the target. So it would be second, but you've seen the target in that vision all the way, way, way back in All's Crossing. I've also seen him yeah. through um, Annika. Yeah, yeah, and her scrying. Okay, so I'll, I'll count that as first hand because you've seen him on multiple accounts. Sure. Um. Plus, he's been so relevant in your life <laughs> for the past, like, yeah. two months, three months. Um, I know that, that fucker anywhere. <laughs> uh, but then in terms of connection, really all you would have is that likeness or a picture. We should have taken something from his house. Yeah. Um, <laughs> body part, lock of hair. That's why he's bald. Uh, <laughs> uh, bit of nail. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so that means that he would have to make a DC 17 wisdom save with minus two, right? If I'm if I'm doing the math here right. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Let's see what happens here. So you conjure the magics into the amethyst pommel, you gaze into it, and you can see the wisps of purple cloud begin to form. And let's see, so that means that he needs to roll a... Oh, wow, he needs to roll a... Wow. <laughs> a 15 hmm. or something or better? Is that what you Unless said? he's got, like, a negative wisdom or something. Wouldn't that be nice? Hmm. Not bloody likely. I think we're not that lucky. No, yeah, we're well, not. Cause... Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, all right, sorry. Okay, sorry, I'm still the math. All right, so here we go. Wow. Ash just drop on the floor out there? No. You rolled a heavy one. I could hear it from here. Did. That was the metal one. It was weighted. Um... Well, it only makes sense for him. <laughs> Was mean. I'm sorry. Wow. 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 Maybe we're gonna kill him anyway. <laughs> Cancel party. How dare you? All right. So minus two plus his modifiers. Okay. That's a five. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, oh. Man. So with that, you gaze into the pommel, and you begin to see the clouds depart and you can see a very familiar sight. Same as you did when Annika scried um, when you were back in the keep. You can hear the crashing of waves upon the um, sides of the ship, the buffeting of sails from the sea breeze. And eventually coming in to vision, you see Duradin Dupree. Boo. Yeah. Truly uh, disgusting man. Huh? Humpty Dumpty looking motherfucker. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so you can see him sitting Luna thinks so too <laughs> sitting currently um writing down in a journal um different things that uh, need to be accomplished not really able to get a good gaze of them um you do not see duncan or frederick anywhere at least in the current moment which is a worry and a relief to you there is however um a man who opens the door looking in to the captain's quarters. And this person is familiar to you and would be familiar to you and all of your companions. The weasel, 
as he peeks his head through the door, that forward jaw, long pointed nose. He says, Master Dupree, we should be arriving in Port Sahara soon. The winds have been kind and, well, your um, wizard friends, they uh, have quite a way with magics to make the ship go faster. So we should be there. End of the week. Monday at the latest. You can just hear him breathing. And Dupree looks up and says, Very good. I'm happy to be back. <laughs> I, I know my vision is kind of fixed, but I'm going to try as hard as I can to see what he's writing. Make a, make a perception check. Make a perception check. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do oh, it. Lord, have mercy. Do it. Do it, do it, do it. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, uh, my perception's not great. God damn. Hey. It's not terrible. Yeah, a 20 is not terrible. <laughs> yeah, no, that's actually, that's actually really good. Okay. I so. could most people say it. <laughs> Okay, okay. You can see that it is what looks to be sort of like a, a planner. Um, you can see the different dates up in the top, with a, with a 20 specifically. You can see the different dates up in the top, and you can also see that there is um, what look to be names and times um, and notes next to those meetings. And there are some that have no weight or or meaning um to you you can see um some that just seem to be probably wealthy merchants who he's making deals with or other members of the Tarkirian trading company you can see next to those names it's ttc um there are a few names that like i said they do they do strike you um one of those names being very worrisome to you. Um, well, two, truly. For one, you see a King Kjalderson IV, um, which Morganics would know is the current king of um, Ivarion, which is a little alarming, but also understandable as Duradine Dupree um, owns a city within the jurisdiction of Ivarion, so a city-state, almost. Independent, but still um, integrated into the kingdom. Um, you can read some of the notes there, um, like um, meeting went well, new trade deals established. Um, you can see something about trouble to the south. Uh, in Isinalor, Duradin is going to send um, more troops there to try and bring try and bring peace to the roads. Um, that's something that you can see. Um, there's also been trouble at the seas. There have been um, reports of a um, ship with tattered black sails um, looking like it should be sunken, um, popping up more and more frequently due to something. Um, not really sure what. Um, those are some of the notes you see there. Um, there is a second name that you see that is much more worrisome than the first. That's Korvak, the Knoll General of Yanogu. Um, you can read some notes. It seems as though he didn't write much, but apparently he recently had a meeting with him this week. Somehow... And it seems as though Duradin has been able to broker peace of a kind, an alliance with the Knolls. And there's one line that you catch that is extra worrisome, is that the Knolls are willing to retreat for now. But then you can see that there is a name for a time that's coming up. Um, currently about 9 a.m., there's one for 9, 10 a.m., a meeting that he's going to have with 
a person named oh, here we go okay <laughs> sorry I had to, had to... <laughs> um, a person named Lahashin um the name is odd. You can't exactly pin down, even with your extensive knowledge of places and people around the world, it's very foreign. Um, but you know, if you continue to focus and watch, because um, this is 10 minutes, right? Scrying? Uh, I'm actually in the process of trying to figure that out. Da, 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 okay. da, 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 da. Yeah, I think it's 10 minutes. Okay, so that means it is just getting around to about the halfway point as he's finishing up writing some notes from the uh, Korvac meeting. And eventually, 9.10, 9.11 comes. And you can see this deep purple swirl form in the middle of the room. And from that portal steps out a woman. Not of a race that you recognize. You can see deep yellow skin with what almost look like splotches or some type of scale almost on the faces and forehead down the neck, wearing um, decorative armor of deep greens and golds. Long, long, long blonde, uh, brown hair and two eyes of almost entirely black. She steps out, and Duradine closes the planner and slides it off to the side and says, Ah, Lahashin, it is here. So good to finally see you again. Have you had time to rethink my offer? And you can see that the woman, Lahashin, in clear view now. I knew it. She's a Yanti. I think. I think she's a Yanti. That's just LS talking. Sorry. Go ahead. It's okay. She smiles and says, You know, I have had time to think over your offer and. We believe you may be right. And you see her look over past Duradine's shoulder. What is this? A scrying eye from a faraway <laughs> land? Abort! <laughs> And as you do, you can see this, like, um, that same, like, purple uh, energy begin to flare up around her eyes and ears and those odd splotches and scales. It begins to leak out of there, this powerful magic. And you can see her reach towards it. And I need you to make an intelligence shaving throw. Oh, shoot. A shaving throw? An intelligence saving throw, yes. As you oh, can no. see that this is um, some type of psychic energy affecting your mind. Does it look obvious that Morganics is, like, stressing during this? Oh, I yeah. Would... <laughs> I would okay, have tried I'll... to drop it. <sighs> then in that case, I'll, I'll bend luck as well. What does that mean? Okay. You get an extra D4. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Oh. I'm sorry, but that is not a success. <laughs> sorry. No. What? One off, one off. 19, DC what? 19. Ah! Ooh. And you can feel... Out. What about the bad luck? 
the men like that was the extra d4 it was a one oh all she needed was a two or higher so with that you feel no damage but you feel almost like tendrils on your mind and there's no damage nothing happens but the connection is severed immediately and you have no idea what that meant but something was able to reach in through that that spectral scrying eye through some type of psychic means and learn something from you. Do I feel like it's still there? No, it's gone now. We've been made. Okay. Uh, I will drop the hex blade. Clunk, clunk, clunk. Falls onto the ground. While I was scrying, I would have been quietly murmuring everything I saw and heard. So, like, describing as I'm seeing up until the end there. Um, I think she... She did something to me. I think she might be able to tell I was scrying. Well, she knew I was scrying, but I mean, she knew someone was scrying. I think she might be able to tell I specifically was scrying. Do you think they know where we are? I don't know. I mean, do they? Do you know if they sense it was you? What about what about us? Are, are we safe? Is it just you or? We knew that someone was scrying. And I felt something reach out to me. I, um, I could try scrying on someone else in the ship and see if... I don't know if um, that's a good idea. No, I think that's a, a brilliant idea. Did you see anyone else on the ship? Well, we know... The weasel is there. He was, he had just entered the room. Um, I, 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 I'm not. That they would be more aware. But if we get even just a a glimpse of the current situation, then we'll have a better idea. We, if he gives out an alert that it was me specifically, we might be able to find out how much she got from that and you know as as <laughs> as bad as i am at an idea i mean if if they've already seen us what more have we got to lose i'm gonna let you magic people decide this because uh yeah no i don't know Barn asked what do you think hmm Oh man, they're gonna be here. I actually I actually Oh man, I want Varnast to make a history check. Oh shoot. Okay. I'm okay at that. Okay. Twenty two. Okay. (laughs) Okay, twenty two. It's good, it's good. So Varn asked, upon her giving some information on what happened, there were stories that you heard um, where one of the big things in the Council of Yggdrasil and specifically Jormungandry in general, your your, um, homeland, Mm -hmm. there is a lot of pride, especially being from Yalbjord, uh, in sailing and... Um, the sort of majesty and freedom that can come from it. And a big inspiration and guidance that your people received a long, long, long time ago after the breaking of the world were from these individuals who sailed on ships that coasted through the sky. Ships propelled by magic. They aided the Jormungandry, the Aesir and Vanir alike in their ways of sailing and 
and mastering the seas, while your people, the Jormungandru, were never able to master sailing via the air, you became masters at sailing the sea, and that was good enough for you. That, along with the stories recounting psychic powers that these individual had, these individuals had when they came to your people so long ago, they became stories that were told about masterful sailors and even more powerful wizards, mages, sorcerers, psychics. When Morganix tells you all of that, you start to, the dominoes start to fall as you have a very scary realization that Duradin is not only making allies in the material plane, but elsewhere as well. And with very, very powerful entities in other planes. Specifically, as you realize, Gith. Yeah, so when Morgana asks, like, Varnas, what do you think? I don't think he's even answering. I think you're kind of seeing the dominoes kind of falling for him as he's just kind of, like, staring off and seems to be thinking and reflecting. Varnas? This is so much worse. I will basically recount the summary that Joe just gave without to repeat it all. So can we do it or not? Don't. I I mean, it can't be that much worse, surely? Well, I was pretty upset that he had Knowles as friends. Now he has these guys, and it sounds like they were making a promising offer. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Well, surely that's more reason to, to find out more again if they've already if they already know we've seen them I, I couldn't it really get that much worse perhaps if you use this on someone like the weasel where they don't have as much magical gifts and they can tell what's happening I feel as though he's not smart enough to really understand and I also feel like he probably wouldn't want to be around them that much. I mean, from the limited information we have on him, I can't help but feel like he would stay give quite a wide berth, at least talk and appear when he needs to, and then just, you know, fuck off. I would say if you see this thing again, didn't just stop it. I tried to stop it this time. I wasn't quick enough. That's my concern. We don't know what she's learned. She might have already learned too much. If we try again, she might be able to pull the rest of the information. If they think Morgonix is scrying, that's not that damaging. If they figure out we're here, right? if they know... DM we question. lose our shot. Oh, sorry. No, that, that was the last thing. We lose our shot. When yeah, I scried with Annika... The vision that we had, was it the same room or a different room? Same room. Same ship. Shit. I was going to say, if it was a different room, I can scry on a location. I can scry on that different room specifically. But uh, nope, same it was room, just, same room. All right. Bare minimum, I don't think we should do it now. She's probably waiting for you to try again. And according to you, it didn't take long before she showed up, before she caught you. If she's actively looking for you and ready, I'm concerned. Yeah. I say we wait. If we're going to do it again, which I'm still hesitant about, wait a day. All right. Yeah, I... I don't want to do it when she's there, I suppose. It's too big a risk. But we know that they're close. Yeah, speaking of, they're, they're aiming to be here Monday. What day is it? Like, how many days Wednesday. away? Wednesday. 
five days. And they said Monday at the latest. It could be much sooner than that. I mean, I'd argue after that, they're going to make it much sooner. Yeah. And we I need would... a plan. My, my concern is that Duratine somehow has many allies. And I feel attacking as a whole is very dangerous. We need to isolate. I just don't know how. We need more information, but sending her back to Scry is not going to be smart right now. I suppose we could go try and get a look at his house before he's here. Um, the I, marks. Yeah, I like that plan. What? You like or you don't like? No, I, li I like that. Let's... I, I mean... I'm sure there's, there's trinkets to take. The marks. There are rates of passage that allow you in here. Mm. Oh, crap. I believe that you do not have permission. Oh, now. shit. And unless you would oh. like to see your skin turn to ash in front of your eyes, I do not recommend it. Along with that, I'm not worried about his house. I think we have more pressing concerns. I mean, I could just burn it down. In all honesty, well, that was what I was about to, to say. Wait, what? One of my bad ideas? Wait for him to settle in and burn the house down? Yes, Force I can. Him out? I can send him in with multitudes of my guards. It's not unheard of. They can throw fire, catch the place, burn it to the ground, and then Duradine will be scrambling when he gets here. He will know, as I'm sure there is already a good chance, if what you've said is true, that he may or may not know who is here. He may not, may or may not know that it was you. If he knows, then what point is there in hiding anymore? You think there have not been wars in these streets before? Cyrus is grinning. <laughs> oh god. Wouldn't it be better to wait until he's actually inside? Do you think that if he knows you're here, he'll go to the one place that has his name marked all over it? No, but it will piss him off. If we get him to think irrationally, there might be a chance. Burn down what he's worked so hard to achieve. Leave him nothing but ashes. All right, well, that's step one. I don't hate it. No, I, I quite like our, this idea. If our cover's blown, then embrace it, I suppose. We yeah, don't I mean, blown. What? We don't know that it's blown. I mean, even if it's not blown, I mean, I'm all for, you know, shock and awe. Like, uh, you know, Mum says, I mean, it, <laughs> if he turns up and his place is just ash, and, you know, that was what he had here, then he'll be, well, one, angry, and two, irrational. He'll make terrible decisions more than usual what if we set it up once we have word of his ship within sight so that it's happening as he arrives before he even docks do we have that kind of power to see what ships are on the horizon like to recognize them with enough money in this town you can know anything this seems like a worthy Avenue to put my money into. And I'm sure Sven could help us with this as well. Should we continue to make him help us, though? No. Probably not good for him. If I'm being I entirely mean... honest, did you arrive in the city with him? Yes. Did yes. you walk down the avenues and boulevards with him? Yes. So he's already so far in that he doesn't really get a say. 
Doradin has eyes anywhere and everywhere. He is a man who we... likes to know what's going on. What if we got a ship and sailed out to meet him and engaged him in the, on the water? I worry that that's a bad idea. We know how powerful his allies are. Again, I don't feel as though facing all of them head on is wise. If this woman that you saw can just that's fair. jump in and out. Away. Right. I, I mean, kept you guys alive against Meredith. Let's let's not, please. I mean, let's just embrace what we did before. I mean, you know, Agatha. I mean, fuck it. Let's just fight dirty. Like, I don't see the point meeting him head on. Let's just burn his shit down, fight dirty, sneak away, and just dismantle him. There are many this... businesses inside Port Zahala that belong to him. Destabilize the economy that he has helped made to support himself. That's interesting. I could have more than just his home, but his pocketbook as well. That is something I could easily get my hands on. Does he have oh. many allies in town, though? Could we they be bought? as well and persuaded I still have all of the Pytus I'm sure if people are willing to buy maybe we can buy ourselves some allies as well if we're burning his buildings down we don't need them to necessarily be in on it we can just do it oh, so we, we might be able to buy a few off but Doradin is known to pay his guards well How do the writs of passage work for servants? How how does one find servants in this area? Could we obtain a servant's writ of passage and enter his home? Hmm. That is possible. I, I'm trying to explore all angles before we commit to Whenever someone yeah. leaves, they have a housemaster, someone who is in charge of making sure everything is maintained and held up to date. All of the food stores are repaired, and any time that servants come in or out, there are new ones hired. A Dean question real quick. Yeah. So didn't Sayla, with this last um, level up, get the ability to craft fake identities? Wouldn't that include a right in a place like this? given she has the days and the coin? If if the rights weren't magical, yes. But the issue is is the, the rights are like embedded into your skin and they are like like it said, if you're trespassing somewhere you shouldn't be, the right begins to like singe away your, your hand. That that's the okay. issue. I was wondering because I was like, I don't know if that counts if that would be something she'd be able to get her hands on or not. Yeah. It, it, I'm Oh, sorry. I was just going to, in a place with, with less money and magic, yeah. Like any, almost anywhere else in the world that would work. But here, the people who live in the inner circle, they take their privacy very, very, very seriously. Gotcha. Hey, we're the I, shot. I'm only wondering if there's a way that we could get ourselves hired, get permission to be there, and stage a much more covert, covert quick attack. It is possible. If you can disguise yourself, you could go to where the workers are hired, and provided that you stand out to the headmaster, the housemaster, when they go to hire new workers, then... We, c we can't all disguise ourselves, though. No, but I can craft them. I can craft a disguise. Also, if we're hired before he gets there, I mean, they have no reason to know what we look like or be worried about it. And once he does get there, part of the point of the good servant is not being seen. 
I guess that one's riskier. Yes. Morganix, go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw for me. Oh my god. <laughs> uh oh. You're fucking scrying on us, I bet you. Oh no. <laughs> Told you. Oh. <laughs> okay, continue. Do I know I failed? No. Well, I think with Scry, you don't notice. No. Nope. I thought you. Oh, I thought you did. You notice if you succeed, because then it doesn't happen, and you know somebody was trying to scry, but if you fail, it's like nothing happened. How long does scry last for? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. So then I suppose that you could be hired. Um, you could... A small number of you. It only takes a few from the inside. Could disguise yourselves. Get hired tomorrow. And be in, in and out. I, I mean, know. I personally, I stand by the plan of just burning everything to the fucking ground. I think that's a mistake. Why? Why do you say that? Because he can just turn around and leave. Nothing's making him come in here. He's making well, plenty of powerful friends that aren't here. He wants true, somebody but here badly. Yes, there's a reason why he's coming, and if he's going to the lengths of which he is to get here, um, I don't think he's going to leave without achieving whatever that is. I mean, no, I, no, I stand by Alec. I, I don't think he's going to sit around if shit's burning. He really does not like me. And by the sounds of it, not not my mum either anymore. So I I don't think he's going to turn her out. You're all forgetting he left a Pharaoh. Because he lost. That's because he thought he was going to lose and die. He's on he's all on stuff safe on ground fire. here. There was but, nothing left for him in a Pharaoh Varnast. He if tried to take what was down, there will be nothing for him here. I think we're missing something. I think whatever it is he's coming for, we don't know what it is, and we don't know how important it is to him. There's obviously a greater risk involved for him to be leaving Afara and to come here. He came here for a reason. So... Of, uh, I, I, I doubt he would have made this trip just for mum. I mean, clearly he had. I mean, he he must have plans here, surely. There might the, be a um, question. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. What, what were you Do I know? You? Is there any? Because I'm from previous roles, pretty well read on Baramichi. Did he ever spend any time in the Gemstone Archipelago? Um, go ahead and make a history check. I, I can go ahead and tell you, yes, he did, even beforehand. 13, okay. Yeah. Oh um, my good rolls are gone. I'm switching my dice. <laughs> he did spend quite a bit of time here. Um, you do remember that from like the origin of Baramichi, he, he was Thoralian. So he left from Thoral to go to Cartesia uh, in the hopes to make a delivery, but ended up getting sidetracked in a pharaoh with the original insurrection of Knowles, um, led by uh, uh, Korvac and, and um, fought with Eliza all of those years ago. And after he left a pharaoh, um, he finished out his delivery, and then he did spend some time in the Gemstone Archipelago before returning back to a pharaoh. That's about as much as you know with a 13. So he did spend some time after the whole affair situation in the Gemstone Archipelago, but then eventually he returned. Penelope. Do you know anything about Baramichi? Um, 
the Thorolian pirate, yes? Uh, explorer. Yeah. He spent some time here. I'm wondering if he did anything significant. Is there a library in this house? <laughs> <laughs> um, there would be a small study, not like a library, yeah. but there'd be a small study. Is there a library in the city? In the city, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do I have permission to go there? Yeah, it would be oh, in the uh, the outer <laughs> area. Oh, well, it just depends. If you want to go to like, like <laughs> the the uh, archives, you could go in two places. You could either go to, I'll go ahead and pull everybody to the Gemstone Archipelago map. Come on. So you could either, let, let's get dirty and pre-off the screen. Um, you could either go to the depository, which is where any information about the Gemstone Archipelago is uh, collected by the scholars who exist, and it's stored there. Anything, and I don't have permission to go there. You might be able to get it from Jinx, because that's where her writ of passage comes from, is from the scholars. Okay. Any Anytime something is verified and corrected, it is then sent to the um, on-site depository that's inside Port Sahala in the inner circle. So as I said, there are the three islands that exist on the inside of Port Sahala. There is the dedicated Merchants Alliance, the Scholars, and then the Natives. Um, those embassies exist there. And in the Scholars Island, um, anything that is ratified and certified in the depository is sent there for storage, for the official history of the Gemstone Archipelago and the surrounding areas. Here's what I'm thinking. <sighs> we might be blown. We have no idea. We know he wants something here badly. He left. He had to have left fairly early. He left before we ever set foot in New Afera. We know that we're following some of the same things. We know he wants Penelope, but there's probably and possibly something else. Our best hope might be figuring out what that is and beating him to it. I agree. Question then becomes, how do we find out what that is? If Jinx could get me into the library, or all of us into the library, we could figure out if there are any significant local legends about Baramichi, anything he did here. That's the only trail I know to follow. Other than, what is the religious structure in the archipelago? Um, there is two opposing ideologies um, okay. where there are the risen who as, as I've said before they've sort of pulled their sure. islands out of there and and they have such a, an obsession with with air but they're they're an enigma uh, where it's hard to understand what exactly they want is they do a lot of weird things the natives of the gemstone archipelago it, it is similar to um, a pharaoh, but it is um, from what you've read about and what you've been able to see, but it is much more sacrificial. Um, Do they worship the same gods as the yes, it's, natives? Yeah, the primal deities. Um, so, uh, Akadia, Elowin, Istitia, and Kossith. So the same four primordial deities, entities, they, they still worship those titans. Um... If the natives here worship the same gods Baramichi devoted himself to, he might have come here looking for something. Something from the gods? Well, we've been following his paths in Afera, and it's, it's temples to those gods. The places we've been. Is this true? It seems linked to me. Am I alone? Am I really reaching here? I'm sorry. No, I don't think you're wrong. 
I just, I... I still feel as though we don't know as much about Baramichi as we think we do. I don't think anybody does, but... It's a possible lead. It's something we could explore. I agree, and I'm still not against the burning of his things either. No, I'm. I don't. I don't want to force. I'm not against that either, but I don't want to force Varnast into it because he does make good points on it. It might be a bit preemptive. Well, then we need to do something rather than being inactive. If you think getting to this library is going to help, then we need to go and we need to get any information we can. If we can beat him to whatever it is he's looking for, then we will again have the upper hand. And if that's the case, we bring him to us. What do the rest of you think? Please tell me if I'm, if you think I'm being really off base. It's a wild theory, but. I mean, we can always check and then if we don't find anything, we can just burn the place to the ground. Not the library. No, not the library, Jesus. <laughs> what place were we wanting to burn? How, where would you gather <laughs> I want to burn the library? I. It's hard to tell with you sometimes. All I know is I'm fairly useless when it comes to this because of all the magic. Can't exactly be the sneaky person. Iris, Varn asked, what do you think? Oh, well, <laughs> I, I mean, my thoughts are pretty known. I'm, I'm, I'm all for looking more into things, but I, I'll be honest. I'm happy just to go around the town, setting fire things, setting fire to things that he that he owns. So maybe don't ask my opinion on this, because trust me, I'll, I'll drink, I'll drink a cask of wine and just go around and I'll fucking burn half of Port Sahara down. <laughs> Varnast? Too many unknowns. We reach out tomorrow, scry on the weasel, see what we can figure out. Depending on what we learn, it can change a lot. I say we go from there. When Jigspit gets back, I'll see if she can obtain a writ for... Do any of you want to go to the library, or should I just go do that myself? I don't think you should go anywhere alone. I can go with you. Okay. What time is it? It's about 10 a.m. That time's accurate right there. Still early. It's still early enough that I could potentially go to the library this very same day if things yes. fall in place. Yeah. I mean, we would need those guys to come back. You would, yeah. Do we know where Jinx went? She went with um, Vera and Galadar to search for information on the feather. So specifically, no. Specific, yeah, specifically, like no. Does anybody feel like wandering the markets with me to try to find Jinx? I can communicate telepathically across planes, but if you want oh. to go walking, that's fine too. No, that would be lovely. I just feel like I ask you to do that a lot, and I sometimes feel bad. But if you could, that would be great. Alright, should I just tell them to come back here, like, immediately, because things have changed? Just ask Jinx if she could come back. Just Jinx or all of them? 
Um, well, what Galavar is doing is important, but I don't want him to be alone. There's just so many noises in my head right now. Um, I guess, I guess all of them. All right, I'll cast sending then. Okay. Uh, Jinx. To Jinx. Okay. Yes. Jinx. Things have changed. Need you and the others to come back to the villa immediately. I don't. I know I have some words left, but I don't think I really need to say anything else. Okay. You pooping? <laughs> Bro. Sorry. Critical role joke. It's okay. Okay. So. You cast sending, and immediately there is a response where the first thing you hear is heavy breathing. <laughs> Vanest, there are, are people who, who came up to us and, and they, they said that we needed to come with them and Galadar and myself and Vera, we said no, but then they started to grab us and we ran and things are not looking good right now. We're running and, and I don't know where to go. And out of words. <laughs> out of words. Shit. Sending, where are you? Where were you? Tell me now. Okay. We were in the western markets heading east. Uh, northeast. We were trying to get back to the merchant's villa. That's where we're headed now. We're headed there now. I think we're maybe 20 minutes away. I just looked at everyone. We gotta go now. And I'll just start moving. I'm follow. Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. Sorry, Drawd. Yep. <laughs> Daggers, all that fun jazz. Sayla grabs her cloak because she has colorful clothes on right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alrighty. So with that, all of you then begin to Fuck. throw everything on, throw everything together, grab your weapons. Luckily you're in Ji Feng's estate. And um you see that um, Penelope is like starting to go over towards things and like strap weapons on as well. Um, and you he can did. see Ferdinand is like over by her and, and he keeps saying, I don't think that is a good idea. We should not go and fight. What if something were to happen? You can see the two of them sort of um, spatting back and forth, slowing down your exit. I'm not waiting for him. I'm, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not waiting for him. Penelope, you should stay. Please. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alec, make a uh, uh, make a persuasion check. It's already set to wisdom. Oh. I would have also been saying something as well. Okay. Uh, never mind, Alec. You don't have to make it. Oh well, that damn. Yeah. yeah. Don't listen to her son, not me. She yeah. made it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Alec. Yeah, Alec. It was. You know, she was maybe debating when Cyrus was saying it, but you saying Penelope stay. She was like, "All right, Alec said so." Uh, uh, no. Yeah, sure. <laughs> She, when the elf with the war paint tells you to stay, <laughs> you stay. <laughs> she, you can see that she comes over to you, um, Cyrus, and she says, "Fine, I'll stay. But if anyone gets too close to you, remember you just found me. You can't go and die now." And she's gonna take off one of the daggers and she's gonna hand it to you. Aww. I promise, Ferdinand. You keep you keep an eye on her, and Cyrus just fucking legs it. Yes, Zamir. And by the way, Cyrus, that is a plus three dagger. Oh, oh shit. shit. Yeah. Don't let oh, oh, see that. Do not let see that. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> okay, so you now have a, a super powerful magical dagger. You sheath it, tuck it into your waist belt, and all of you begin to run and dash about as fast as you can um, out of Sorry, the city really streets. Quickly. Yeah, sure. What's up? Uh, as we're going, Varnas is going to use his last third level. And he's going to cast Sending one more time. Oh, Yeah, I know. Oh. But, uh... The one's wrong. Sorry. Uh, yeah. He's, he's going to message Sven. Oh, yeah. Get back to g Fang's estate now. Okay. Um, and in that tone that he knows. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can tell he responds, not out of breath, nothing. Uh, okay, I will. I'll hurry back. That's it. And you can already tell that he started moving as soon as she got the message, even before he responded. Um, in tune. Seemingly, no one was able to get to him yet. 
Um, so with that, they head out. Uh, all of you head out running, sprinting about as fast as you can, diving through city streets. Um, alleyways just trying to get to the um, heading, will that be southeast to meet them northwest, trying to run over those interconnected bridges and everything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you keep running and running and running as fast as you can. And eventually you can see coming across one of the bridges as well, the first thing that you notice is that as you're running, you can see that the city streets and the market squares that you keep running through and passing, the people, the amount of people keeps thinning and thinning and thinning until eventually oh God. you look over one bridge, you can see Jinx and Galadar and um, uh, uh, Vera. You can see all three of them running across that bridge um, matched with all five of you and Dogolin, and you can see that it doesn't look like anybody is behind them, but eventually you go to the, um, beneath the bridge, and eventually you meet in the middle. And you can see that Vera is out of breath, you can see different cuts and bruises, Galadar has a few bolts, like, jammed into his shield, along with some, like, burnt, uh, metal, and some metal that's kind of corroded away, um, on bits and pieces of his armor, and Jinx also has a few cuts and bruises, um, a few pieces of, like, fur or matted together from flame and you can see there they breathe and um you can see uh, uh vera and jinx are just thrilled to see you and jinx goes oh 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 bless the gods oh, i thought that oh my god her. and yeah what she, happened she hugs back um galadar approaches and says uh, there were uh, individuals they they had a, a deep uh, yellow skin pointed ears um i, I believe i i'd had dealings with them in the past uh they they were teleporting, moving, fading in and out of reality. Gif, they were gif, and they had this large beast with them, um, black uh, like a panther, but these tendrils hanging off the back of it. Mm. <laughs> Where are they now? I don't know. We crossed the bridge, and and they they were right behind us, but I don't know where they're at now. Let's move back now. So as all of you with the three NPC companions begin to move back, you can see coming from behind you, as you all begin to run, there is just uh, what looks to be a um, man in um, uh, some type of, of uh, scrappy leather armor uh, cloak um, all around him. And he just says, Stop. <laughs> I think it's best if you stop. I put myself between him and Vera and Jinx. You can see he's currently at the head of an alleyway about 25 feet from all of you. There's no reason that this needs to sprout into an ugly encounter, destroying the beautiful city that's been built around us. Oh, I agree. I think it's a much better idea if you think you've never even saw us to begin with. And Zara's will cast suggestion. Okay, okay. Okay, DC 17. Okay. So, it does succeed. He says, oh, never saw you. Right, 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 right. Saw who? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, my friend. Cyrus gives him a wink. <laughs> okay. So as you do, um, he says, I never saw you, but Duradine would like to speak. More than happy to speak, but I never saw you. And you see him tuck back around a corner in the alleyway, leaving the path open. Well, this is bad. No, so he knows. Didn't. Yeah. I'm so didn't. sorry. You couldn't. It's not your fault. Okay, so do all of you keep moving? Back to the villa. Yeah, back to the villa now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. as soon as you go to move forward, you hear this low thrum, this... Oh. And then you hear this growl, this... <laughs> As in front of you, there is just this 
very similar portal that sort of tears open and appearing in front of all of you is this large, taking up the entire alleyway, Black Panther. But much larger, about nine feet long with these uh, tendrils coming off of the back. And you can see that it, it seems to, very similar to when Cyrus casts Mirror Image, it almost has that effect on it, where it's just hard to place it in your eyes. And you can see it just growling. And similar portals open up in different areas around you, these... Um, anywhere from deep green to bright yellow skinned humanoids emerge. Some it with- cast Ishmen on the panther. Ooh, okay. Ah. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. That is a good use of one of your spell slots. Yes, ma'am. Um, even if it doesn't work, this was a great idea. Okay, charisma saving throw. Um different. Okay, 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 okay. If it's not from this realm, it gets banished permanently to its normal. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right. Let's see. DC 17 charisma saving throw. But, but, oh, but, damn. But. That's, that's, that, that is, looks in your favor. That is not a good modifier for charisma, charisma saves. Okay. So, with that, now currently concentrating on the spell, that is an 11 on the charisma save. So you see the creature... I just thrust both of my hands out forward in its direction, and this wave of energy hits it. Okay. And, and it goes away. But you can see now there are... <clears throat> like I said, those portals opening up all around you, there are about seven of them that you can see tearing open <laughs> those same um, purple portals opening and emerging from them those individuals. Green, uh, deep green to bright yellow, uh, wielding these odd curved and weighted blades that sort of ream with this purple psychic energy. Uh, parts of the blade just missing, holes carved out of them, but in place of it is that razor thin energy that seems to just like crackle and thrum within the blades as Varn asked they match what you remember from the stories that you were told Gith and you can see them emerge you don't know if there are any more or any less and you can hear one of them speak out and say I think he was very clear in his instructions it would be best if you drop your weapons and come. Is there a chance that they've been super distracted and say like can sneak off? Like so she can mm. Are we in an alleyway? Yeah, you guys are kinda like at the mouth of an alleyway. And here, let me uh you know what? I actually do have let me go ahead and move you guys here. It's like quick. bye guys. <laughs> Not so much that, so <laughs> my, <laughs> my thought process is she can attempt to get a vantage point and maybe find a way to get everybody else free at some no, point. No, bye, I will tell your story. <laughs> okay, let me go ahead and... <laughs> no um, faith. No right. faith at all. Here, let me go ahead and pull all to scene. Hopefully I did this right so that way it's like, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. Oh, wow, this map. Ooh. Oh, boy. Wow. We're fighting, right? Of course we are. <laughs> okay. So with that, you can see, and I'll make uh, uh, tokens for uh, uh, Jinx and Vera, um, but you can see that they all stand around you. The uh, gith who is speaking is uh, this one right here. Wait, which one? Uh, this one right here. Very top. Very top. You can see he is definitely wearing some heavy plate mail armor with several holes cut into it as well that are sort of thrumming with that deep purple energy, sort of twirling his blades as he stands there and says, Weak-minded ones like yourself stand no chance. So, drop your weapons and come with us. Uh, I exchange looks with my friends. Because... Uh, Everybody seems pretty much like fuck that, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I will do radiant soul and bamf my wings out. <laughs> and you can you can see the gith all smile and laugh <laughs> and looking to one another brandishing their weapons. And you can tell that this fight 
It's going to be a nasty one. But oh, sadly, I, oh, it That's pains me. I, what do you, what do you want to do? Minutes. What do you mean? End combat 30 minutes in after three turns? What? Let's just go and see how far we get. I just. No, I don't I, care. I just don't. I, I won't accept any answer. I, other than no, going. I don't uh, like. We have 30 minutes. Minutes. I don't like ending a session in the middle of combat. Well, we'll oh, be fast. Let's, let's, let's just be speedy. Let's just do this. Give me each just one. I, I will play devil's advocate for my first turn. I'm not gonna lie. That will take Joe a while to do my first turn. Oh God. So. We're ending here. We're ending here. It's because I, I know, I know, I know. You all like hate that. me. I know, but believe. But believe me now. Now see what I'll do. Is here. Let me do this. Let me do this. Let me see. I, I'll, I'll do this. I'll do this. I'll, I'll take off fog exploration <laughs> and, and token visibility. So then you can see the whole map, and then you can make you can make strategies. Because right now you guys are. Have you met us? You guys, in, yeah. you can plan where you want to go, and there's levels and like stairs up to places and doors, and and then you can. You, I know. I hate me too. All right. <laughs> I know it's a half an hour early, but there's no worse thing in the world than having to end a session partway through combat. Because then what's going to happen is we're going to come back next week and everybody's going to be like, where was I? How many hit points should I have? What's going on? Why don't we just oh, finish the map remembers everything? But we have All a right. house showing at 7.30, Kayla. I don't care about the house. We're not going to get it anyway because the housing market sucks dick. <laughs> so I don't care. All right. Come on. Come on. Come on. We're ending here, guys. Let's let's take it. I, I just think I can get some more sleep. So, I mean, I, I'm not going to. See, look at. And Jamie needs more sleep. And Sarah needs more sleep. I'm sorry. I don't want to end not here okay. either. I love you. You're great. You're wonderful. It's fine. I'll just be grumpy. Hey, there's some there's some stank in your voice right now. Kayla and I are the only ride or die bitches in here. Uh, absolutely. Ride or die all day. <laughs> no, it's not an hour early. It's only a half an hour early, Jazz. No, <laughs> Kayla's the new drama queen now. That's right. Oh, no. He knows what's up. I'm so sorry. I don't want to end here. All right. I love fine. you. It's fine. This we is going to be you. some good combat. This is like next tier combat, too, because you guys, <sighs> it's no longer bandits. It's fucking. Too bad it's a week before we get to it. I know. Sure. I have no third level spells. Awesome. <laughs> and yeah. No spells. I have cantrips and the hex blade. But I got wings. Get a blood hunter up. I know. I, I yeah, this is, this is yucky combat. Right I have a tune to friendship. <laughs> <laughs> I have a tune to friendship. Oh, man. I just think it's great that we're level 10 in celebration of the one year anniversary. Isn't that right? We nine. Wow. We're nine. <laughs> no, nice job, was... Ryan, though. I, the implication was we just leveled up, but obviously that's not true. That was a valiant oh. effort. Maybe if we would have, you know, had combat, I... we could have leveled up. <laughs> uh, I will also like what to say, say <laughs> I, I, um,. Alas, I do. I I was uh, I was I was a fan of your uh, your your uh, uh, Pepe Silvia Baramichi theory. Oh, it's trying to suck up to me now. I think that's pretty. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> oh I got everyone around by now. It's fine. I, <laughs> no, that uh, is Jamie, what he's going to do. That is absolutely not true. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. My first term will legitimately take about 15 minutes, and I'm not exaggerating. It's so bad what you're yeah. gonna do. Yeah, it's a thing. It's gonna be great, but it's a thing. <laughs> and the thing yeah. is, I also need to make stat cards for Vera and mm. Jinx, mm. and get their tokens on there. I promise I it'll be worth it. Definitely would have established a protective stance in front putting myself like keeping them in the middle because yeah. i'm guessing they are very squishy yeah especially after what just happened because they've already been bludgeoned a little bit okay 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 so galadar is actually missing a little bit more health there you go he's at 40 out of 55 right now um so then i'll go ahead and put jinx and vera right here in the middle of everybody okay yeah well, it hurt me to get rid of the kitty weapons. I wanted it I so know, bad. But that was no. a good call, though. <laughs> oh, man. I just. Ah, well, no point in talking about it now. 
I thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'm sorry that we're ending a half. I don't want to. I really don't. If we didn't have this house showing, we would have. I well, I don't think I would have done it anyway. This is this is probably going to be a little don't bit of a you longer. Don't you use that as an excuse? It's going to be a little bit longer of a combat encounter anyway. I hope you know that this is going to be a long car ride to that house, Joe. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yep, okay, end the stream. Bye, tune, everyone. No, Have a good no, Joe. Tune, tune in tomorrow for Isles or Tuesday for Salamander Coast or next Friday for the Wardens of Avera. Who knows? It might be cut <laughs> short. You never know. Kayla, stop. <laughs> no, I'm bitter. You get to play yeah. D&D tomorrow. Yeah. That's what a murder people is telling. Well, you'll get to do that a lot next Friday. And you'll get to murder plenty of people as Nelfian tomorrow, all right? You, oh, yeah. you got to play I'll more... i get sadness you gotta... from Nelfian. No, no, it's not the same. No, you just got to play more Noob Saibot tonight after we look at a house. So, we, so that way you can have some ideas. Okay, thanks for watching. What Ryan said, watch the streams. Thank you for watching. You're all amazing. I'm going to go look at a house and, and be sad because my wife is angry at me because I ended D&D a half an hour. <laughs> Everyone hates me. Okay, bye. I <laughs> bye. Know.